वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू द वीडियो सॉल्यूशंस ऑफ आकाश प्लस बाइजूस मॉक टेस्ट हियर विल बी डिस्कसिंग द केमिस्ट्री सेक्शन ऑफ द पेपर सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द वेरी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ केमिस्ट्री एंड द क्वेश्चन इज हियर सो स्टूडेंट लेट्स रीड इट मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ SO3 इज गिवन बाय द फॉलोइंग रिएक्शन एंड द रिएक्शन इज 2SO2 गैस प्लस O2 गैस गिव्स 2SO3 गैस If the equilibrium constant Kc is equals to 1.7 into 10 raised to the power 2 per molar at 300 Kelvin, then the value of delta R G naught at the same temperature will be. The options are 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin into 300 Kelvin into ln 3.4 into 10 raised to the power 2. Moving to the next option. Minus eight point three one four joule per mole per Kelvin into three hundred Kelvin into ln one point seven into ten raised to the power two. Moving to the next option, minus eight point three one four joule per mole per Kelvin into three hundred Kelvin into ln two point seven into ten raised to the power two. And moving to the last option, eight point three one four joule per mole per Kelvin into three hundred Kelvin. Into ln 2.7 into 10 raised to the power 2. Students, for this question, we need to know the relation between delta R G, delta R G naught, and equilibrium constant. I am writing the relation. So delta R G is equals to delta R G naught plus R T ln Q C. At equilibrium, we know. Here I am writing at equilibrium. QC is equals to KC. Also, delta RG is equals to zero. That means the above equation becomes zero is equals to delta RG naught plus RT ln KC. That means delta RG naught is equals to minus RT ln KC. Here I have to put the values of R, T, and KC in the given equation. So R is equals to eight point three one four joule per mole per Kelvin. Temperature is equals to three hundred Kelvin was already given in the equation. Multiplied by ln Kc. The value of Kc was already given in the question, and that is one point seven into ten raised to the power two. That means the correct answer for this question is option number B. The value of delta R G naught is equals to minus eight point three one four joule per mole per Kelvin into three hundred Kelvin into ln one point seven into ten raised to the power two. Moving to the next question, students. Which of the following has the maximum number of atoms? Students, in this question, we are given with four options, and we have to identify that in which option the number of atoms are maximum. So let's read the options. Number A, ten gram of N two gas. We are also given with the atomic mass of nitrogen, which is fourteen U. Moving to the next option, ten gram of O two gas. We are again given with the atomic mass of oxygen, which is sixteen U. Next option is. 10 gram of O3 gas. Still, we are aware of the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16 U again. Moving to the last option, 10 gram of copper solid. And here, the atomic mass of copper is given, which is 63.5 U. So, student, let's start this question. First of all, we are given with 10 gram of N2. So, first of all, we'll be calculating number of moles of N2 by dividing the given mass by molar mass. So, 10. Divided by twenty-eight mole of nitrogen, but here we have to calculate number of atoms. So ten upon twenty-eight into two, since the atomicity of N two is two, multiplied by N a atoms of nitrogen. Moving to the next option, ten gram of O two. Again, here we'll be calculating the number of moles of O2, and then we'll be calculating number of atoms of oxygen. So, 10 upon 32 moles of O2, which is equals to 10 upon 32 into 2 into Na atoms of oxygen. 
since here the atomicity of oxygen is 2 so I have multiplied 10 by 32 by 2 and Na is Avogadro's number moving to the next option which is 10 gram of O3 so 10 divided by the molar mass of O3 which is 48 gram moles of O3 then we will be calculating the number of atoms of oxygen so 10 divided by 48 multiplied by 3 into Na atoms of oxygen I have multiplied this figure by 3 because the atomicity of O3 is 3 now moving to the last option 10 gram of copper means 10 divided by 63.5 moles of copper which is equals to 10 upon 63.5 into Na atoms of copper. So student it is very clear that maximum number of atoms are present in option number A that is 10 gram of N2 gas that means the correct answer is option number A. Moving to the next question which of the following is not correct about carbon monoxide? Students in this question we are given with four statements about carbon monoxide and we have to identify the incorrect one. So let's start with the very first statement. Let's read it. It is a water soluble gas. Student this is an incorrect statement as carbon monoxide is almost water insoluble. Moving to the next statement. It is a powerful reducing agent. Student, this is a correct statement as carbon monoxide has a strong tendency to accept oxygen. As a result, it acts as a strong reducing agent. Moving to the next statement, it forms a complex with hemoglobin. Student, this is also a correct statement as because of a presence of lone pair, carbon monoxide has the ability to form complexes. Moving to the last statement, it is highly poisonous in nature. Student, this is also a correct statement as it hinders, that is carbon monoxide hinders the oxygen carrying ability of blood by forming carboxyhemoglobin. As a result, this is a very poisonous gas. As a result, carbon monoxide is a highly poisonous gas. That means the correct answer is option number A. So moving to the next question. The calculated spin only magnetic movement of CO2 plus ion is and the options are 4.90 bm, bm is Bohr's magneton, the next is 5.92 bm, the next option is 2.84 bm and the last option is 3.87 bm. Students for this question we need to know the atomic number of cobalt and then we have to write its electronic configuration. So let's start. The atomic number of cobalt is 27, its electronic configuration is argon, then we have 4s2 and 3d7. Since in the question cobalt is given in 2 plus oxidation state, so CO2 plus argon 3d7, the two electrons are removed from the 4s subshell. So here I am writing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means we have three unpaired electrons. Now, student, we have to calculate magnetic movement, and there's a formula to calculate magnetic movement, which is equals to under root n, n plus two, where n represents number of unpaired electrons, which is equals to three, three plus two, under root which is equals to under root 15 and we know that under root 15 is equals to 3.87 bm that means the correct answer is option number d moving to the next question which of the following is a natural polymer the options are cellulose nylon 66 neoprene buna s so students among the given options cellulose is a natural polymer Nylon 66 is a synthetic fiber, neoprene and buna S both are synthetic polymers. That means the correct answer 
is option number A. Moving to the next question.